Taking risks. It's what drives us. It's what pushes me to jump out of planes and off buildings. And it's what pushes business founders and entrepreneurs to seek out and forge new paths. This show is all about how the leaders of every corner of the business world identify, assess, prepare, and overcome risk, turning their greatest challenge into their greatest reward. I'm Jeb Corliss, and this is Taking the Leap. We're told our common humanity unites us, and it's true. Thus, our time at the commode should never cause a commotion. Also, I just found out the word commode is a fancy term for bathroom. Point is, going to the bathroom for many is a ritual, a given. Well, it's actually biology. We all have to All right, they won't let me say the word So let's get to the point. Number two, when we go, we see cleanliness, efficiency, and we need certain items to lend us a hand. Enter Dude Products. Today, I'm talking to one of the founders, Sean Riley, along with his three friends, Brian Wilkin, Brian Negan, and Jeff Kunkowski, started Dude Products in 2010. Fast forward to 2015, Sean and his buddies showed up on the Shark Tank floor with a concept and near perfect execution. Dude wipes. Wipes to take a guy's time in the bathroom from subpar to near perfect. Dude wipes were created for the every man. Today, dude products make more than the now famous wipes. From bidets to powders to skincare to deodorant, their products help guys get clean. Their sleek packaging and clear messaging are a game changer in men's health. Dude products are making men's intimates accessible. It's time to meet the company that gives a Welcome, Sean. How are you doing today? Doing good, Jeb. Thanks for having me, man. Excited uh, to chat dude wipes with you. I don't know if you, you all, you definitely don't know this, but, but I actually know about your product from over a year ago. And when I saw that we were going to be doing an interview with the dude from Dude Wipes, I actually got super excited because I actually use your product all the time. I do these big base jumping trips out in the middle of nowhere. So I, I, I started looking for ways to like conserve resources. So, you know, conserve paper, toilet paper, conserve water when you're out there for weeks on end. So I started using wet wipes, you know, to clean myself and, and I, I, I just fell in love with them. I, I quickly realized that toilet paper is super gross. These are amazing. And I start reading, it's like, they're made out of natural fibers. They're biodegradable. They're flushable. They, they don't have any odor. They're, they're, they're unscented. They have aloe vera. I'm like, oh my, this is, I, I, I instantly was like, this is amazing. So I took them back to the RV. That night I used them. So I just wanted to let you know I'm a fan. <laughs> and, and you're a wipes aficionado too, it seems. Yeah, you know, I, you get into them. Once you learn about them, you really do. Because it, it is. Toilet paper's gross. It's always been gross. I don't know what we've been using for 40 years of my life and everybody else's life. It's strange. So what we're going to do now is I, I, I know I've seen a bunch of your interviews. And I know that you've told your founding story of Dude Wipes many, many times. But what I'd like to do is I'd really love to focus on the risks you had to take. And, and, and the, the way it made you feel as you were like going through the process of creating Dude Wipes. So let's start kind of at the beginning. Like where were you? What was happening in your life? What was going on when this idea, this concept for Dude Wipes was first sparked? Yeah, was in Chicago. Um, yeah. So mid-20s. Post-college, you have a job, single yeah. guy, having a lot of fun. You know, we're going out all the time. We're eating late night burritos. You know, there, there's a lot of bathroom conversations. And, oh, yeah. and the dude wipes, you know, spark moment was when I was buying baby wipes because I was buying other stuff for the apartment to, to stock yeah. up this whole big apartment with cleaning supplies and household essentials and stuff. And the baby wipes quickly started just getting sawed through Everyone was using them um, instead of toilet paper. There, of course, there's something fun about, uh, you know, fart jokes and, you know, bathroom <laughs> humor and stuff like that. So <laughs> the conversation about making a new brand of wipes called Dude Wipes that was nothing, you know, like anything out on the market started to get more and more serious where we, we kind of really started formulating a conversation and a business plan around, well, why shouldn't we just go for this, you know? Did you, did you work with friends at the time on this concept? Did you have buddies that you kind of got in together to do this with? 
Yep. So, you know, three co-founders. We're all high school friends or some of us even earlier. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Back in Chicago after college and just kind of that creative energy and, and spirit. Can't do it by myself, you know? Yeah. Get, let's get a mix of people. And really it was other buddies who were, you know, entrepreneurial in, um, themselves and, okay. and looking to take a risk and looking to take a gamble. So that's when we, you know, started seriously figuring out, you know, how much money it was going to take to to make the wipes and really started building uh, that beautiful Dude Wipes brand. And from very early on, it was supposed to be a brand that felt like you were just talking to one of your buddies at the bar. We're mm -hmm. actually the first people to ever make a product that's for wiping your butt that actually talk about wiping your butt, you know, uh, for that it's the Charmin bears. And even just reading the package itself, the things you say on the package is absolutely makes you cry. It's that funny. And I, I, I want to get into this idea of like, okay, so you're, you're starting this idea. You're starting this thought. I want to make this company. We want to build this product. How did that happen? Where did you get the financing to like the seed funding to begin trying to turn this dream into a reality? Did you did you finance it yourself with your buddies? How did you do that? We financed it ourselves. So all bootstrapped, um, $30,000 was the nut we kind of had to crack okay. to get Dude Wipes made in okay. a batch that the manufacturer would make. Mm -hmm. So we all pitched in our money once we kind of figured out what that dollar amount was and said, you know, hey boys, we might be kissing this money goodbye, or we might be building this multi-million dollar business like we think we could do. We took from the idea to the brand, to the product, to putting the money down and getting it made. Like that's the uh, big bang moment for an yeah. entrepreneur. Like that's the spark that sets everything off. And a lot of people don't get to that big bang or that spark. They get yeah. too caught up in the noise and the research and perfecting and, and they basically mm -hmm. end up talking themselves out of the idea. And that was one thing I was not going to let us do. Like if we pissed away 30 grand, that's fine. But one thing we're not going to do is not launch this and not get it out and not give this thing a chance to like breathe and, and succeed. So now you've got the product out there. You've, you've, you've invested yours and your buddy's money into like starting that first run of product. What was your next kind of like push, the next thing that took it to the next level? Our first step was to just kind of start getting the product out there. And that's what gave us a lot of confidence, handing out these little individually packaged dude wipes. We did like a couple festivals in Chicago that summer. And we were just kind of seeing people smiling and laughing and walking away and handing them around. And so that gave us a lot of confidence to um, actually apply for an innovation award in the world of wipes. So okay. in 2013, we applied for that early on in the year and we go down to, you know, Orlando. We're all still working nine to fives. I'm still working a nine to five. I'm supposed okay. to get this keynote at a wipes uh, conference about why dude wipes is the most innovative product of the year. And we got oh, about wow. $10,000 in sales and you, we're going up against Kimberly Clark, who has a new menopause wipeout, multi-billion <laughs> dollar conglomerate. Oh my. And just like the consumers, when we got into this trade industry, we mm -hmm. saw that Dude Wipes was also the breath of fresh air that the industry had been waiting for. Immediately, the industry of our peers, our first year in business votes us as the most innovative product of the year. So that really gives us some confidence. Later on that year, um, we get into an incubator in Austin, Texas, okay. that is uh, for CPG companies. So okay. that was the uh, pivotal moment for me where I was like, well, hey, I'm going to go to this incubator. I can't take three months off of work. Like I got to quit. Uh -huh. I'll go to this incubator, learn as much as I can, try to get some investment money, you know, try to take this business to the next level. That was that like taking the leap moment of I'm doing this. This is going to become what I focus on. Yep, exactly. How did it work out? How'd it go? It was slow. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think people say this, but it really is true, especially for first time entrepreneurs. Like you got to be willing to eat shit for like one to two years. Oh, wow. You know, and, and I find that to be pretty true. And that's kind of what I had to do was now just kind of living off savings at yeah. the incubator, learning a ton 
And long story short, nobody wants to invest in the company that we met down there, but but we learned a lot. Wow. So come okay. back to Chicago, start putting things into place that we learned, you know, moving the product out of the spare bedroom into a warehouse, okay. um, you know, looking at online more, focusing on making some improvements to the packaging and the product and really workshopping through things. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, I was also waiting tables, you know, for a little bit when I got back oh, wow. to Chicago, just to, you know, have some beer money and, and be able to, you know, pay the rent and stuff like that. Did the thought of giving up and stopping ever cross your mind? Or was it just 100%? This is what I'm doing. You know, I, I set out to say, I'll go down with the ship, like, <laughs> going after this, if it yeah. works. You know, I really think it'll work. I really think we can grow this and make it work. If it doesn't, you know, oh, well, my nine to five world will be back there waiting for me. It's not going yeah. anywhere. Um, okay. So it, 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 there was a lot of confidence in it. But yeah, of course, when things are moving that slow and, and you are not making a ton of money, there is, you know, you have those thoughts of, is this going to take off to the next yeah. level? So what made you think about, I wanted like Shark Tank? What made you think about like, we're going to go for that? Like where, why, why did that thought into your guy's mind? Personally, I was always just a big fan of the show and just okay. like anything else, I was like, I want to be on that show someday. Yeah, I think okay. it's really cool and be a pivotal moment for the brand and, and to, you know, get an investor. And right along the time, it was mid 2015 that, you know, they chose us to go out to LA and pitch. We had just gotten the commitment that like in September, Kroger's toilet paper aisle was going to take on dude wipes. And oh, that's nice. something we had been working towards for a long time, right? Like Very dude nice. wipes is going to be the disruptor of the toilet paper aisle. Well, you got to get in the toilet paper aisles for that to happen. Yeah, of course. And uh, that took, you know, two to three years to actually get one retailer to say, all right, we'll give you guys a shot. And, uh, you know, married with all of that, it was uh, it was really good timing to get on Shark Tank and, and make for uh, a good pitch. So then you went and pitched and Mark Cuban's the one who decided to go with you guys. Did that have a big impact on the growth of your business? For sure. I mean, we were growing really good that year, five times mm -hmm. what we had done the previous year. And okay. then still running this uh, company off of that original $30,000 investment getting wow. online loans, you know, high interest online loans and paying them back and doing anything we could to keep this thing growing and keep buying more inventory. But no outside capital had, had come into the company. So it was still like very much always teetering of going out of business, essentially. Oh, and how did, so, that make, wait, 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 like, I gotta, how did that make you feel being on that constant edge of collapse? Was that it? Was that like a disturbing experience for you or did, or was it just more excitement? excitement yeah definitely you worry about it uh it's it's almost just part of the game at that standpoint yeah. for for who we were is like you're just scraping by and you know yeah. you hear people say it countless times but it, but it's true like that's what's actually happening you're you know barely paying the bills and barely ordering more inventory and grabbing this loan and and all that good stuff so you know when shark tank came out it was you know, explosive moment for the brand, for people to go buy it online and buy it in stores. So we saw yeah. sales go up, you know, we got Cuban as an investor and that came along with a check. We were able to take that money and grow with the inventory a little wow. bit more sustainable than we, you know, would have without him. And then okay. we also, you know, started getting um, Mark's strategic advice on, you know, how how he would look at growth at our time as a company, and then also tips on, you know, financing, stuff like that. So after all of that happened, did you, I mean, because you guys have been growing organically from that point forward, right? Like you haven't been getting outside investors since that first like $300,000 drop. You guys have just been able to grow through selling your own product. Is that right? Yep. That's incredible, actually. So have like big investors, have like the Procter and Gambles, like come and try to buy you guys out. What could be more impressive is that that's the only money we've ever taken in. So, wow, you know, we, we've grown the company now to where we are using, you know, the banks and um, growing with with loan financing and, and growing the right organic way, reinvesting into the company. Yeah. Um, as we stand today, that Mark Cuban investment in 2015 is the only investment, you know, to date. And uh, Mark's the wow. only other 
guy. That's on the, impressive. On the board. For your, this is and this is your first run at it. This was your first company that you built from the ground up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Wow, and dude, I'm impressed. Know. That's amazing. Congratulations. <laughs> I mean, congratulations. That's a really big deal, dude. And again, it's a cool cool product so do you guys obviously do you're doing your own r d because you use your own products right so you can make it's like oh this one's really nice this is what it, you do right i mean that's kind of why you built them in the first place was so you guys could use them <laughs> yeah we kind of joke around like we don't have these big research groups i mean even to this day we don't do a ton of it it's do we like the product does it meet our standards we yeah. get a little bit of feedback and then we just go you know we we know our customers pretty well we have a real mm -hmm. good relationship with them we are constantly talking to them on social media and through our website and in person and and all of these things so we're just able to kind of react and go and give people what they want so now what i really am interested in is was it concerning to you at all about like being so like gender specific by calling your brand dude was that did that worry you we weren't sure having never done anything like this before if if we were too specific or too niche mm -hmm. uh but but really it ended up being you know the blessing and the right authentic true move to keep pulling the brand forward and and now i've learned if you mean everything to everyone you end up meaning nothing to anybody and you know we define a dude as a fun loving person who is positive and likes to joke around and stuff yeah. like that. So plenty of women and moms and little girls potty trading, you know, the amount of people we see using dude wipes is, is really pretty diverse and, and everybody from, you know, the suburban target customer to the urban Amazon customer to the rural Walmart customer. Those are all big customers of ours, mm -hmm. all different kind of socioeconomic backgrounds, all different types of people in America you know, gravitate towards dude wipes. Now, does everyone gravitate towards them? No, of course not. You know, there's yeah. people who would rather have something more reserved or, or generic or anything like that. So, you know, we definitely have enjoyed staying true to, to who we are and authentic to who we started out to be. People just like things that that mean something. So, yeah, yeah and the, the farther we went along, the more bullish, you know, we continued to get about our brand and not... Yeah kind of segmenting it or changing it too much you know well it's interesting because you know how much i love them and it's funny because <laughs> my fiance who happens to be a woman she loves them as well so it, it, it right what happened is you guys have a your your branding is very male centric but your quality is so good that it doesn't your branding almost doesn't matter at that point your branding is just enough to get people there to use them but once a person actually uses them it, it, it really does change. Because like I said, my fiance loves them. And she's not a dude. Even though I call yeah. her dude half the time. Right. <laughs> exactly. So now She is a dude I, if she's using dude wipes. That's true. And, she is. So and, uh, now what I, 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 where are you seeing your company like 10 years, 20 years? Where do you think you're going to grow into? What do you think you want to be? Where do you want to go with this now that you created a a real genuine monster of a company. I mean, from ground up, it's really remarkable how big you've gotten in a relatively short period of time. So what are you projecting for your future? You know, we kind of, even though we've come a long way, we've still technically just like scratched the surface of, of where we could be. So, you know, one of um, Cuban's pieces of advice he's always given to us is don't drown an opportunity, you know, focus yeah. on what's working and, and double down on it. We want to continue to be the brand you look at that this brand innovates around, you know, going to the bathroom, anything to do with the toilet. Like, you know, we came out with the Dude Wiper 1000 last year. That <laughs> okay. That's attachment on the toilet. We have Dude Bombs that you drop in the toilet and they get rid of the stank in the bathroom. So, oh, nice. You know, fun things about owning that conversation that we set out out of the apartment, you know, eight years ago to own. Yeah, some aspirations to start going you know, international and move into other markets with our with our brand as well. Um, but a lot of just kind of doubling down and continuing, you know, to move people from toilet paper to dude wipes is yeah. something we could do for the next 10 years and continue to grow the business. So having fun, kind of innovating and growing, but mm -hmm. really laser focused on the mission that was, you know, still the mission a long time ago. Which is basically making people be cleaner and not so stank. <laughs> 
I absolutely love that. And but making before, them laugh. <laughs> before I let you go, though, I, I, I'd love to hear like advice that you would give to another entrepreneur who's thinking about starting their own, you know, like taking their own leap into making their own business. Yeah, I would say ideas are shit. Execution is everything. So, you know, get out of the idea entrepreneur phase as fast as you can and get into the entrepreneur phase. I have something to sell you. Yeah. Uh, I don't care if it's just, you know, a very small run of product. If I can buy it from you on Etsy or, you know, out of your trunk, like, that's the biggest win in the early stage is getting to that stage where you have right. something to sell and don't get too romantic or caught up in everything you can get caught up on because you're going to fail. You're going to learn. You're going to pivot. I mean, you know, from all your volcano losing and base jumping and everything <laughs> that uh, a lot of people say, you know, being an entrepreneur is like jumping out of a plane without a parachute and building yeah. one on the way down. So, yeah. you know, you got to jump out of that plane, though, which is getting the product made and putting yourself out there and then start building the parachute and figuring out, you know, how to scale your business. That's super great advice, man. You know, I, I want to thank you very much for coming on the show today. Um, this has been very informative. It was nice to meet one of my heroes <laughs> who created a product that I use and has saved me from being super gross. Thank you for that, by the way. <laughs> and I appreciate your time, bro. Thank you. Nice, nice to meet a fellow uh, fresh-ass dude. We appreciate you uh, <laughs> rocking, rocking our wipes and supporting us, man. We, we truly appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. Have a good one. Okay, thanks, Jeff. There you have it. Men on a mission to manage our manly needs. I'm grateful for them as are millions of other people using their dude products. I hope today reminded you that sometimes leaps are messy, sometimes they're shit, but they're always worth it. Keep tuning in to learn more about how founders and entrepreneurs are taking the leap, only on Shopware.